My wisdom comes down to this. No man will marry a woman his mother doesn't approve of. Men can say they're ferociously independent, they can scoff at their mothers in private, they can laugh at the notion of maternal approval, but the fact is their mothers occupy a central position facing the casting couch of their love lives. So a couple of years ago, when con contemplating how little I knew, I wondered what would happen if I com combined this one pearl of wisdom, in which I have total faith, with my professional life as a playwright. And so my character, Daisy Grayson, was born a 20-something beautiful, mind-blowingly clever young lady who has just penned an unexpected pop sociological bestseller, Simply Oedipus, which posits my very theory about men and their mothers. <laughs> the play begins during a huge storm. The newly minted literary celebrity star of talk shows and bestseller list Daisy is in her chaotic bedsit, frantically trying to get it ship-shaped before her potential mother-in-law arrives for their very first meeting. Daisy knows she's in love with Benedict, and Benedict, a very serious and accomplished young lawyer with political aspirations, knows that he's in love with Daisy. But da Daisy knows something else, that if Vivian Reynolds, Benedict's mother, doesn't approve of her, Benedict's gaze will certainly falter. Vivian is a conservative political commentator and a very well-known mover and shaker in the national media, a cross between Sarah Palin and Margaret Thatcher. Not only reactionary in her political beliefs, she's also a social conservative. Daisy's going to have to edit every aspect of her life, her brain, her belief system to meet Vivian's approval. She's production designing her life. She changes into a conservative dress, fluffs the scatter cushions, prepares the canapes and readies herself for her audition. Nothing can go wrong. And then the first thing goes wrong. Benedict calls to say there's ice on the tarmac, he's stuck on the plane and he won't be able to arrive before his mother so she'll have to handle the meeting solo. <laughs> when the doorbell goes, Daisy takes a swig of scotch and nerves a flutter, opens the door for her potential mother-in-law. But it's not Vivian she finds on the doorstep, it's the worst possible vision who stands before her. It's Mitch, her impossible, dissolute ex-boyfriend who has dropped in to take refuge from the storm on his way back from a long stint in rehab. <laughs> Picture Kerry Grant. Combine him with George Clooney, add a dash of Robert Downey Jr. and just a touch of a young Trotsky. You can picture him? Good, then email me with his name so we can cast him as Mitch. <laughs> It's a disaster. Mitch with his drinking and his coke fetish. Mitch with whom Daisy got up to all sorts of wicked things during their crazy chapter before she reinvented herself as a go-getting media darling. She has to get rid of him before Vivian arrives. Daisy has left Mitch behind. She's even left the Daisy she used to be behind. But Mitch isn't going anywhere. First of all, there's a storm. But more than that, he knows that underneath her new conservative attire, Daisy still loves him. Despite the fact she's transformed herself from a fun-loving adventurer into an uptight saccharine media darling, he still loves her. He has to peel off the newly acquired and definitely contrived layers of convention she has assiduously adopted and strip her back to the kind of gal who could drink him under the table or go ten, ten pin bowling in the nude. When Daisy reveals to Mitch she's about to marry another man, he knows he has to do everything in his power to sabotage it. Just a little bit more. When the doorbell goes, Daisy despairs that Vivian is going to come face to face with her licentious past, but it's her father, Griffin Grayson, also taking refuge from the storm, who is to radical politics and political commentary what Vivian is to the right. So let's picture Margaret Thatcher in her heyday drinking mojitos with Robert Hughes in a very small bedsit with a hurricane outside. Griffin and Vivian are entrenched murderous foes, pitted against each other on, the nat on television news shows. Um, and uh, they always want to kill each other, but at this particular moment, they want to kill each other even more because they're both up for the same national prize. That their children are betrothed is very, very bad news to both of them. But can they find a new beginning for the sake of their kids? Or are these two egocentric ideologues fundamentally incapable of transformation, even or especially for the cause of love. 
through the nightmare cocktail of ex-boyfriends, murderous parents and a tempest, with no possible escape for anyone due to the weather, the beleaguered Daisy must prove to Vivian, to her father, her mother, to Mitch and ultimately to herself that she is the perfect match for Benedict. When Benedict finally arrives, all eyes are on him. Will Benedict see Daisy for who she really is? Will his love stand true or will Daisy's principle triumph? Will his love bend, snap in the face of his mother's mountainous disapproval? And in the end, who is it Daisy really wants? The wonderfully dependable and terribly mature Benedict or the dreadful Mitch, trouble incarnate, cantankerous, unreliable, inebriated and utterly, irrepressibly gorgeous? <laughs>